uh, just wrapping up the Louisville game. Um, just a, a great win for our team and our program. Uh, as I said after the game, really proud of our players. I think um, the last three years, the class of our division has been you know, Florida State, Clemson, and Louisville. And for our seniors, we've been close in some of those games and never found a way to get over the hump and win one. And this was our last opportunity. And I, I think it was kind of unspoken within the locker room that th this was our last our last chance to get one of those three teams. And uh, you know that, that made it a really big win. And um, you know, again, you want to win everyone, but in our division, those three teams have been at you know, the top of the heap. And, and we had not had a lot of success. We'd been in games and competitive, but hadn't closed one out. And uh, like we talked last week, it was very important that we play a, a 60 minute game and we finish the game, which I, I thought we did. Uh, our offense stayed aggressive the entire game, and uh, I love the way we ran the ball and took six minutes off the clock from eight to two minutes in the fourth quarter. When you play with tempo and you play really fast, and then suddenly you slow the whole thing down. Sometimes that is hard and not a smooth transition, and we made a lot of first downs running the football and took a lot of time off the clock. Um, you know, defensively, uh, you're playing against just an incredible player, and we had seven sacks uh, with two minutes left in the game. You know, they were under 400 yards and 17 points. And, you know, we're, we're disappointed that the last two minutes became what those became. Uh, we got a little sloppy, and when you get sloppy against a great player, he makes you pay, um, which he did. So we gave up, I think, 132 yards and 15 points in the last... 90 seconds of the game, which made the, the stat sheet and the scoreboard look worse. But again, for 58 minutes, I thought we played well on defense and got stops and made big plays. And certainly a Sang Bassey's pick was big. The sacks were all big. Uh, the red zone stop near the end of the game when they went for it on fourth down. Those are all really big plays that if we don't make those plays, it's probably a one score game in the fourth quarter. So. Um, but again, it was a good win, and now um, we move on. And as we get through uh, the second half stretch of our schedule, things certainly don't get easier. Uh, we head up to South Bend uh, to play a, an outstanding Notre Dame team. They're 7-1 right now. Uh, they mm -hmm. lost to Georgia by one point in a very competitive game. And in the other seven games, uh, their average margin of victory is 28 points. You know, the closest game that they've had other than the Georgia game is they beat Michigan State by 20. So they have just steamrolled people. Um, you know, they're, when you watch games and you watch film, there's a lot of snaps with Notre Dame that the game's already over. You know, they've just rolled people. Um, offensively, this is one of the most physical offensive lines we've played in our four years here. They, this is a very physical, well-coached, they know what they're doing, they're excellent technicians, they roll people, they play with an edge, they go to the whistle, uh, not dirty, but they go right to the edge and they play extremely hard. This is a, a great offensive line we're playing. Uh, the running back only averages about nine yards per carry. Um, that's with 130 some carries. I mean, it's. You know, the, the Adams kid is, uh, you know, he, he needs to be in the Heisman conversation because what he has done is amazing. Every time he touches the ball, he can run you over, he can run past you. And we've seen a lot of really good running backs here. Dalvin Cook and a lot of great players. And, and Adams is right up there with those guys. He's, he already has almost 1,200 yards. And again, that, that number is just, you know, 8.9 a carry. Um, Quarterback Wimbush, very athletic. He's got close to five, six, he's got over 500 yards rushing himself. Um, he can beat you with his feet. He can beat you with his arm. He plays with a lot of poise. Uh, for a new quarterback in a new system, he has picked things up extremely quickly. You know, you, you always, new quarterback, new system, you know, kind of when you see that, you hope things aren't meshing. Uh, he knows where to go with the football and how to run the offense. And their tight ends and their receivers are big, lean, and they can all run and they can all stretch you. 
So th this is an elite offensive unit. They're averaging over 40 points a game, um, you know, about 470 yards, and they're rushing the ball for almost 320 yards a game. So this is, uh, you know, you just bang. Clemson, Georgia Tech, Louisville, Notre Dame. I mean, I don't know if we've ever defended a string of offenses like this in consecutive weeks that are all so different, yet all so efficient and so explosive and good at what they do. Uh, defensively, um, we know they're going to be really well coached. Uh, Mike has made a, a big impact down there already. Uh, they're talented. They have good players, but they play hard. They play fast, and they know what they're doing. And again, that's uh, hard to do. New coordinator, new defense, and there is very, very few busts on film. These guys get aligned. Uh, they play fast. They're physical. They're aggressive. They're playing with confidence. Um, and they've got a player at a couple players at every level. You know, the, the linebacker Tranquil is really, really good. He's playing their rover position, and that's a do it all position, and this kid can do it all. Uh, they've got a couple of defensive ends that are almost unblockable. Um, in the secondary, they play with really good eye discipline. Um, you know, th their eyes don't wander. Um, they, they really have defended multiple offenses well. And they're only allowing 116 rushing yards per game, but even more impressively, they've already created 18 turnovers. So th they're one of the top teams in the country in limiting the run, creating turnovers. So does that sound familiar? So that's, um, you know, that, that's been Mike's M.O. That he tries to make teams one-dimensional, and, and he's doing it. And, and the special teams are really well coached. Um, the special teams is where you see the details. Um, but they do a lot of good things on special teams. They do some really neat wrinkles on kickoff return. Um, and they're, they're very sound in all aspects of what they do. So, um, you know, our guys are excited. Uh, we're certainly confident uh, after last week's game, but we also respect and appreciate the, lo the level of football that Notre Dame's playing right now. Th these guys are playing at an extremely high level. They are beating very good teams soundly, and they're beating ranked teams in almost non-competitive games. So uh, as a whole, we know we're going to have to play well. Uh, like any football team, uh, we have some challenges. Um, you know, we've been pretty lucky this year in terms of injuries. And, um, you know, we, we took a, a couple of injuries uh, on Saturday that, uh, you know, it's part of football. Guys got to step up. So, uh, as everyone knows, Greg Dortch um, had an outstanding game for us. And unfortunately, we won't have him for the year. Um, you know, Cade Carney and Jesse Bates will not play this week. Uh, their injuries are not season ending. Uh, those guys will kind of be week to week that, um, you know, we'll see how they heal and who knows. We know we won't have them this week, uh, but hopefully we'll have them, you know, in, in a couple of weeks. Um, but, you know, that'll be a question I'm sure you guys have every week, and I, I just don't know yet. But th they don't need surgery. They're not season ending. And we'll just play it week by week how those guys are. So any questions? Facing Mike, does that bring a degree of emotion given how much history you have? No, I'm, I mean, it doesn't bring a degree of emotion. I'm really proud of Mike Elko. Um, Mike's an outstanding coach. He did a great job for me at four different places. And, you know, he spent, you know, well over half of his career with me. And, of my 18 years as a head coach, I think Mike was with me for 12 of them. So he's a great coach. He's, having, he's doing a great job there, um, and I'm proud of him. But, you know, on Saturday, we want to beat him, and he wants to beat us. Is, have, you, have you, Mike, uh, Elko stayed in contact yeah. after his departure? How often did you all talk, and I mean, will that talk uh, cease this week? We're, we, we talk very regularly. Um, we text after every game, good luck. Congratulations, um, and it will cease this week. <laughs> uh, can you uh, give us an update on how Greg's uh, doing uh, uh, physically and, uh, and I guess, uh, mentally? Well, he's, I mean, he's down. He was having a great year, and 
One of the reasons Greg's such a good player is Greg loves football. He loves to compete. Greg loves practice. He loves the spring game. He loves lifting weights. He's a football player. So he was, he's crushed and disappointed. Um, but the great thing is Greg's a redshirt freshman. So he has more years of football. Um, and it happens. You know, it's not like he did anything foolish or stupid. It was just one of those injuries that occur playing football. Um, and physically, he's doing much better. That every indication is that it went as well as it could go. And, um, you know, we have every reason to believe that we'll have him back for the spring, 100% healthy, ready to go. I mean, I, I know there's four regular season games left, you folks, you know, plan and hope to have a, have a fifth game on your schedule. Is there any chance he could be available no. for potential No, no, he's this is season ending. Okay. So, you know, again, I, I think we're hoping and we, uh, you know, everything, it's early, yeah. but, you know, we think we'll have him back for spring football. When you're scouting a team like Notre Dame, you mentioned how many snaps are played in garbage time, for lack of a better term. Does that make it more of a difficult scout? No, because there's, there's eight games. You know, there's still plenty of meaningful snaps. So if, if this had been the second game of the season or the third game of the season, that might be a little bit more problematic. But I, didn't, I don't think Notre Dame was holding anything back to try to beat Georgia or to beat USC or to beat NC State. So, you know, again, it's, uh, you know, you, when you play teams with new coordinators, uh, you know, if you have them game one or two, there's a lot of unknowns. I think by game eight, nine, ten, you know, the, I'm sure there's wrinkles, but their identity is their identity. How do you, um, how do you, how do you hope and expect to replace the production that you're getting out of Greg Dorn? Well, I mean, we're very fortunate. Last, Tabari Hines is a really good football player. Tabari Hines has made a lot of plays here. Uh, Tabari Hines was starting to begin the year, and then he got nicked up, which gave Greg his opportunity. And I mean. John is playing at a high level. Matt Colburn's playing at a high level. The O-line's playing at a high level. Scotty Washington's playing at a high level. Chuck Wade's playing at a high level. Cam Serene. Um, you know, we, it's part of football. And uh, we are, uh, we'll miss Craig. Uh, he was having a great year. Um, but we've recruited and we have depth. I think we're better prepared to handle this than we ever have. And again, we'll miss him. I wish we had him. but. I mean, I think we're really fortunate to have a, a caliber of player, Tabari Hines, who's been playing all along. You know, Tabari played a bunch of snaps the other day and had two catches and had a great play against Georgia Tech. And we've played him in games and meaningful snaps. So, you know, let's go. Next man up. And uh, from a Jesse Bates perspective, um, you're not necessarily facing a, a pass-heavy team, but Jesse does so much on that side of the ball. Uh, is it important for you to get Luke Masterson to be the best Luke Masterson he can be and not try to go out there and be Jesse Bates? Absolutely. I mean, Luke's uh, gotten, he's one of the most improved players on the team. If you've noticed lately, we've been playing him in the rotation. Uh, we've been playing him anyways because he's improved and he earned playing time. Uh, and he's better prepared to go in there and play than he ever has been. So. Um, you know, there comes a point in the season these things happen, and you never know when or who. Uh, but this is why we recruit and build depth. And like I said, it's never ideal, but I think we're better prepared to handle this this year than we ever would have been in years one through three. Maybe a little bit better to handle this at five and three than you would have been at four and four? Um, I mean, everything's always better when you win less. You know, I mean, and it's, this is our profession. You know, that you go from really smart to really stupid to maybe having a little bit of intelligence again, but you're always a three hour game away from being brain dead. It's just, it's the nature of what we do. So, I mean, absolutely. It's when you win, the morale is high and the practices are better, um, which is why I was really proud of our football team because. We had three tough games. I mean, Florida State and Georgia Tech were gut-wrenching, rip-your-stomach-out losses. And the team never, I mean, last week we had a great week of practice. I mean, we, I really felt last week that there was a focus level and a 
just a resolve um, that we had to have. And I think, you know, sometimes you can lose a game and end up being a better team. And I think the Georgia Tech game was a very, very valuable lesson to our football team that when you play high-level opponents, you can never, ever relax. And I don't feel like we relaxed at all on Saturday. I think every time the offense got out there, it was like, we got to score, we got to do something. And the defense, I mean, just some of the effort they made in trying to tackle Lamar Jackson and hanging onto his toes and extending. I mean, it was a very spirited, uh, it was a very spirited football team. It was a team that played with great effort and great urgency that never relaxed. And at halftime, we were talking exactly about, we were in this almost exact position a week ago, men. You know, right before they kicked the field goal at Georgia Tech, 21-10. It was identical. And here we go. Get ready to play. Play. We're not protecting a lead. We're not sitting on a lead. We're going out there to extend the lead. Let's go. And I just, even at halftime, if you saw our guys went out there and they didn't just jog out, you know, the quarterbacks and the receivers started throwing routes and the defensive linemen worked escape moves and the offensive linemen took sets. Like, it's team fast. It's the start of practice. Let's go. And um, I thought we played that way. You know, I don't think we came out that third quarter slow at all. TVs, all the sound bites you need. I thought I was ready to eat chicken. Sorry. <laughs> One of the guys you did mention was, uh, was Cortez Lewis, and uh, I didn't see him in uniform Saturday. Mm -hmm. Is there something going on there? Uh, uh, Cortez um, overslept and missed something on Friday, and I suspended him for the game. Is he available this week? Um, we'll see. So, uh, to be determined. Gonna watch the rankings show tonight? Nope. Interest. I have no interest. So it doesn't matter if Notre Dame slides in. Doesn't I mean, you know, whether they're three, four, or five, right. in their mind, <laughs> they're playing for the playoffs. And they are. In our mind, we're playing a top five team. So, you know, it's not like we're gonna try harder if they're three than if they're four. I mean, they're really good. We know they're good. The film shows they're good. The record says they're good. Um, you know, I hope they're I hope they're number three. I hope they're number two. You know, they're probably you know they're probably going to be in that three five range. So I, I hope they're third. Is 